welcome back to Onyx Pages. I am here with Nisi Shaw, who I love so much. Um, and you'll recall that we did an interview um, in Amsterdam as part yes. of the Other Futures conference. And now we're a year and a bit after that, I think, right? As it was in January of 2018. So that was a while ago. I feel like we've grown. Yes. In our relationship so much since then. <laughs> um, so the reason I wanted to talk to you is because there have been a lot of really exciting things that have happened in your work, and I'm looking at at least one of them. And I want to give uh, us an opportunity to share this with the booktube verse. Um, so I want to start off with New Sons. So for those of you who haven't seen New Sons, this is what it looks like. And um, can you, I, I on purpose didn't do any research at all on New <laughs> Sons, um, except to just sort of say how much I love the cover. Um, yes. Which I think you share, there was a cover reveal way before this got released, and I remember looking at this and being very intrigued by uh, by it. So what is, what is New Sons? New Sons is an anthology of original speculative fiction by people of color. Uh, I was asked to do this by the publisher Solaris, mm -hmm. a British publisher, and um, they, we went back and forth a little bit about the terms. Then they said, okay, just do it and, and it's all on you. So I got to contact a bunch of people and ask them for their stories. Hmm. How did you go about choosing who would contribute? I basically went with people I knew. <laughs> My idea was that I would first uh, go through and get submissions from people who I had uh, invited, and then I would have an open submissions period. But the stuff that I received uh, at, at my invitations, it there was there was no time or or uh, need really for an open submissions period. Mm. Um, I went after people that I knew did wonderful work. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the contents, and so there was a forward by Lavar Burton, and one of the things that I saw last year was Lavar Burton read one of your stories on his podcast. Yes, that was pretty exciting. Um, I got to go to that event and uh, meet him and his wife and Gretchen Yanover, who provided the electric cello accompaniment. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Was it Black Betty? No. Yes, it was Black Betty. Um, they had another story in mind, but I, I suggested Black Betty and it was a hit with LeVar. And after that, he basically said, you can ask me to do anything that you want me to do. And this is what I wanted him to do. Yeah, he was he was so gracious and appreciative of your work. And I remember listening to it and just thinking, because it was recorded in front of a live audience, I thought, right? Yes, it was. Um, and I just, I mean, his voice is so wonderful and his storytelling and his reading is so great. But one of the things that I noticed when he was speaking to you is that he, he just seems so moved by the story and moved by you. Like I could hear it. Um, it was really beautiful. So he's written the foreword, and then I'm no I'm noticing some names like Alex Jennings, who's here, and Andrea Harrison, who's here. Rebecca Roanhorse, um, Trail of Lightning. Yes, I think she. And then her second book is about Sylvia Moreno Garcia, who's Canadian. Um, and who's really great, Jamie Go is here. So, um, what were you, Steve Barnes, who accepted? An award on your behalf. Yes. Congratulations, the Solstice. The, 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 the Kate Wilhelm Solstice Award, which was for a distinguished contribution to Excuse the me. genre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was quite cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes, Steve is in there. He has a story in there. The first time he read it aloud to people, they were laughing so hard they snorted milk out their noses. That's, that's how it needs to be done. <laughs> yes, it was. It was wicked funny. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Tobias Buckle. So Nalo Hopkinson has told me about his work. I haven't read any of his stuff yet, but he's, is he from Trinidad or is he, he's, he's from the Caribbean, I, I think, right? Yes, but I'm sorry. I can't remember yeah, okay. which country. Yeah. So, well, it's probably, it's probably here. See, I told you it did zero, <laughs> zero research. <laughs> yeah. But it's booktube and people are very forgiving when we do no research. Um, I'll find him one day. I think yeah. he should be the first because under. Oh, right. Buckle. 
born in the Caribbean. Maybe maybe that's why we don't know, because it doesn't say. Born in the Caribbean. Yes, was, and he may have lived in more than one country. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, so this is a I mean, this is a collection of writing. Um New Sun, so the I know there's a really great Octavia Butler quote here. There's nothing new under the sun, but there are new suns. So what was your what's your goal with this? What's the idea of a of a new sun? Um I mean when I see this, I think this is about a new uh, a, not only a new work, but a new maybe type of a new conversation maybe or a new contribution. I wanted to make sure that people knew that they, these were new perspectives. Okay. That it wasn't just like um, a new story, but a new way of looking at stories. Each person has their, uh, their, their contribution and their perspective that is based on their cultural experiences. Mm -hmm. And those are different for different people of color. Right. That's what I wanted to get across, and that it was really cool and exciting and fun. Mm -hmm. You don't have a piece of work in here, though. No, I, I don't generally include my own work in, um, in, in uh, things that I'm editing. Okay. Um, I did do the afterward, though. Mm -hmm. um, in which I was talking about, you know, this is the stuff that we want to do. Let's move forward with this and come on along for the fun ride. So for folks on BookTube who I encourage to buy new sons, so buy this book <laughs> and then review it. And, you know, I don't know. How do you feel about people tagging you on reviews? Because this has become a bit controversial on BookTube because some, some BookTubers, I think... I think that the going rule is if you've got um, a negative review of a book, obviously do not tag um, the author on Twitter. If you have a positive review, you you know don't typically, but you might want to tag the, the author because um, the logic is that reviews are for readers. Once the author has written it, it's done, it's out into, in the world and True. people will have feelings about it. So what is your personal view on being tagged when um, folks review your work? It'll save me a little work because frankly, I will go looking for the reviews anyway. They're not written for me, but they do help me. Okay. So... If you, when you buy New Sons and you read it and you review it, please tag Nisi. Sure. Um, you're on Twitter? I'm on Twitter. It's just at Nisi Shawl. Um, I'm on Facebook, um, Nisi Shawl. I didn't try to make it fancy. Easy to find. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when, when we're approaching this, um, are there any questions or uh, considerations that you'd like the reader to have in mind when they're approaching new sons? There are two things to keep in mind. First is that um, I was going for a real diversity, not just of uh, background of the authors, but the sort of thing they were doing, which meant that I was not just doing science fiction, not just doing horror, and I was not focused on a particular theme. Mm -hmm. The other thing to keep in mind is uh, something that emerged from the collection as I was doing it, which is people kept telling me, I never thought I would sell this story. I never thought I would get this story uh, published anywhere. I, I, this is the story that I wrote and then thought, no one cares. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of story that's in there. The story that, the story of my heart, I guess, is the way LeVar put it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you for this. It it feels like it was such a labor period, but also labor of, of love. And I'm looking forward to, to reading my copy and then like, you know, gushing about it <laughs> <laughs> thank on, you. The, on the internet. So thank you about, uh, for that. Um, and so as you know, we're at WizCon 43. WizCon is a feminist speculative fiction, science fiction convention that's been going on for obviously 43 years. One of the reasons, my second time here at the, at the con. Um, and one of the things I really love about WizCon is how many people of color uh, are here who are writing and organizing and creating community. Um, and that's what Onyx Pages uh, is really about. It's about that connection. Um, and 
my favorite memory from my 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 experience last year was going to the Carl Brandon Society party where we made crowns mm -hmm. and I made a crown with like little white flowers and wire and it was really fun. <laughs> um, and it was the it was the first time that I'd actually spent time with members of the Carl Brandon Society and heard more about what uh, what it's what it does and what it's for and who Carl Brandon is <laughs> or isn't. Yes. <laughs> um, so can you can you tell us a little bit more about Carl Brandon? Well, the Carl Brandon Society um, and and what. Uh, I'll just hold this up because this is a fundraising um, book that I purchased today. Um, what is the society and what does it do? So the Carl Brandon Society was formed in 1999 here at Wisconsin, actually. And what we do is we encourage and support the presence of people of color in the speculative genres as producers, as consumers, um, as characters, um, we're in all these different ways. Um, the membership is international and what we do is we have uh, conversations online, we give awards, we give scholarships, that kind of thing. Just we try and, and do our best to make sure that there is a uh, diverse racial representation within the genre. And how, um, how can readers or content creators on YouTube or BookTube, for example, become involved in the Carl Brandon Society or support its work? There is a Carl Brandon Society website. Um, you can check that out. It's just carlbrandon.org. And we have a donations page there. We have information about previous award winners. Mm -hmm. um, we, we give guidelines for how you can qualify for and apply for the scholarship. And the scholarship is for? The scholarship is, uh, it's the Octavia Butler Memorial Scholarship. And we give uh, two scholarships a year. Mm -hmm one to a student who has been accepted at Clarion Workshop and one who has been accepted at Clarion West. Uh, these were workshops that Octavia herself either attended or she taught at. She was very involved in both of them and she credits them with helping her sort of push her writing to the professional level. So, um we spoke about New Sons. We spoke about Carl Brandon Society. Um, there was one more thing that I wanted to ask you about, and I don't. Oh, well, we should talk what about we... Carl Brandon as well. Yes, and, and, this. and also writing the other. I oh, want to ask yes. you about that. Okay. okay. All We've right. We've got a list. We've got a plan. Okay. okay. So who's Carl Brandon? Uh, Carl Brandon, to say this in French, Carl Brandon n'exist pas. <laughs> There was, <laughs> there was never any Carl Brandon. Uh, he was a hoax. Um, this book uh, talks about how the hoax of Carl Brandon was created back in the 40s. There were very few fans of color in the U.S. And Terry Carr and his friend, um, now I can't remember, but it'll say in this book here. Okay. Um, they created this non-existent fan who... Pete Graham. Pete, okay, so there they, there you go. And, and uh, they created this non-existent person who wrote fan fiction, and um, one of the pieces is included in this book. Uh, one of the things he wrote, which was sort of a parody of Catcher in the Rye. Yes, the Catcher of the Rye. Yes. <laughs> um, and why did they create this fake person? Because they were really tired of how white fandom was. Okay. And um, he was really well received. In fact, people kept like hallucinating his presence at different conventions. Uh, then the hoax was blown open. And um, that was, I think, in 1958, as he was about to be elected to a really high office within fandom. So when we came up with our idea of, of a, a, sci a science fiction and fantasy and horror support group, um, we borrowed Carl as our icon. Nice. Yeah. 
Um, I'm looking forward to to reading this. And it's it's really cool that this fake person was created in the, did you say 40s? Yes. Right? And so right now we're in the time of fake news. We've got social media. We're now dealing with like, you know, like really um, highly sophisticated fakes of videos. And so right, like our generate it's not really my generation but the current <laughs> generation of of young folks who are on social media are really familiar with this idea of you know fake fake you know facebook profiles and things like that so it's yes. really interesting to see how the creation of this fake person um was was sort of done to interrupt whiteness right it um, was and and how successful it was and I, th I think that's really, really intriguing and, and creative. So I'm looking forward to this. So this this book is available through the Carl Brandon website. It's actually on the Tip Tree website. Tip Tree website. Okay. Yes. I'll put all the the links to being able to how to purchase it um, in the description uh, in the video. It has an essay by uh, Samuel Delaney in yes. there, and an essay by me and Tempest in there. Yes. Uh, and so, it's it's. Um, a fundraiser for us sure but it also has some really cool information okay thank you for this and the last piece so so k tempest bradford is the other hat there are two of you who do write writing the others i'm not missing anyone else right so the f original book was written by cynthia ward and me and okay. cynthia and i taught for many years but she um sort of has retired from that. Mm -hmm. Her own uh, novels are taking off and uh, Tempest has taken over uh, Cynthia's position and has got us doing a lot of workshops online and in person. So briefly, what is writing the other? Because I hope to have an opportunity to speak to you and Tempest either here or else or elsewhere at another time. But just so that you, uh, those of you who are booktube and authortube crossovers, what is writing the other? It's, it's a phrase that we at, w at one point were thinking we better trademark this, but it's, it's just too widespread. It has to do with the idea that you as an author need to have good skills when you approach writing someone who is of a significant demographic other than your own. So for instance, I, if I'm writing someone who is of a different race or a different age or different ability, a different sexual orientation, different religion, these are all things that I need to bring my techniques to. And uh, writing the other is about the ways that you can approach this, um, what sort of skills and attitudes you need to bring to that. And I think this is a really important, um, I think it's a really important contribution in particular to BookTube and to AuthorTube and to PoetryTube um, because we've been having conversations in the bookish community on YouTube about representation and diversity and people have been coming at this conversation from a lot of different angles so some folks have been saying you know um own voices only right you, yes. you shouldn't you shouldn't be if you are um if you're not like neurodiverse, you shouldn't be writing neurodiverse characters because we really need to, to give the floor over to individuals who are writing from their own experience. And then we have another angle of the debate, which is that, well, you know, writers, like the craft of writing involves writing from different perspectives, right? Yes. You've got, you've got writers who write from the perspective of a tree or of the universe, right? Especially when you start getting into science fiction and fantasy and so... Especially. Especially, right? So, you know, um, not that people from different races are, you know, objects <laughs> from the earth, but um, it is it is a skill. And, and if we are gonna be populating the universes that we're imagining, we need to do that really well. It's not enough to paint some of your characters brown. You actually have to do it well. And I know that you've had workshops on, you know, um, trans characters, um, characters who are um, uh, who are deaf. I think was one of the workshops as well. Writing deaf characters. Or the, the most recent is writing fat characters. Writing fat characters. Um, and so. Um, so I think that's a really important contribution. And the courses are online. Yes, right? although we will do um, in-person in appearances also. I was brought over to a, a gaming studio in Sweden to do that for 
for a bunch cool. of game developers. So, yeah. Yeah, gaming is, yeah, I don't, I'm not a gamer and I know nothing about it except that I know that representation. There's even a workshop on Monday here at WizCon on um, diversity and inclusion in role-playing games. Yes. Um, and so I know that that's been a hot topic for really... And last year, actually, there I went to a panel on um, In Search for Killable Bodies, which talked about um, the actual creation of characters for the sole purpose of them being killed in games, like video games and, and so on, like disposable bodies and who yes. ends up who ends up being um, the bodies that get killed and the bodies that are the heroes. Um, so it's it's a live, definitely a live conversation. Yeah. So thank you for, for doing that. Is there anything else that we should we should tell the book to the bookish verse before we say goodbye to you for this year? Um, more stuff coming out, more stuff on the way. Um, in the fall, there will be a book um, called Talk Like a Man, hmm. which will be reprints of hard to find short stories, an essay and will also include an interview with me, and that's coming out from PM Press, I think in November. And uh, hopefully, if I can get through the revisions, there will be a middle grade book called S Speculation Yay! Uh, coming out from Lee and Lowe next year. Awesome. I'm loving all this middle grade, like science fiction, fantasy stuff that I'm seeing, and mm -hmm. so it's so important. You have to start them early so that, yes. you know, because by the time they get, by the time you get to YA, right, you've read so much. It's nice to get that, um, that that diversity and that creativity in, so that by the time they get to YA, they're not only reading it but wanting to write it. Right, and they yeah. expect it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you, and it's nice to talk to you. Always a pleasure. Always. I hope that you enjoyed this time this moment with uh nisi shawl and um please feel free to leave any comments or questions or thoughts um or links to your own review i know a number of you who, who i know a number of you have read uh everfair and have reviewed everfair and you might have um also reviewed or read filter house um or maybe you've beat me to the punch and you've already <laughs> read new sons because clearly i'm late <laughs> on this um but let's have a lively discussion um about nisi shawl and how awesome she is and all the stuff that we talked about so i'm gonna sign off have a great weekend for those of you who are doing Memorial Day weekend. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.